is the first one to be awake. Oh, yeah. And as soon as I hear um, Sammy wake up, I'll say, brother's awake. And Barrett just goes running to Sammy's oh, yeah. room. It's the biggest smile on his face. Opens the door and runs right up to Sam's his bed. Sammy loves to play with his little brother. He loves having a little brother. We never thought both our kids would have the same diagnosis and they would both need to have surgery at just a few months old. At his two week pediatric appointment, just a normal follow up after his birth, his pediatrician felt what she thought was possibly the closed suture and she suggested that we go get an x-ray at Wolfson. It was just this feeling of fear um, that something was wrong with our baby. Just not knowing uh, what it was or what we were about to go through. The next day after his pediatrician appointment, we went to Wolfson for the head x-ray and it was a quick in and out. He got his x-rays and Dr. Rodali's office was able to call us. I mean, I think I had only been home for about an hour and they called us to confirm what was the closed suture indicating craniosynostosis. Our growing brain is what drives our heads to get bigger. What allows the skull to maintain a normal shape as, as that brain is growing uh, is what are called the sutures, which are the growth plates in the skull. There are really four main sutures or growth plates that um, kind of dictate the shape of the skull as the brain and skull are growing. And craniosynostosis simply refers to the premature closure or fusion of one or more of those sutures um, that results in an abnormal shape. For most babies that suffer from craniosynostosis, that process of, of closure or premature fusion occurs in utero. So the baby will have an abnormal head shape even at birth. It's not just a, a cosmetic abnormality, but it's that the growth of the brain is being restricted in a way that it should not be. If left untreated, the child can experience what's called intracranial hypertension or elevated intracranial pressure and that can manifest as headaches, headaches with nausea, vomiting, blurred vision, um, and ultimately can cause permanent damage to the child's brain. The only way to treat craniosynostosis is through surgery. I've never even had surgery myself. Um, so have you had surgery? No. You've never had surgery. So it's just a big deal to consider surgery and he was only two weeks old and after meeting with Dr. Rinaldi, we knew the surgery would be when he was very young. Um, he would be 10 to 12 weeks old during that time. So um, it was scary, honestly, just really scary to think about. He just sat there and answered all of our questions and acted like he had nowhere else to be. I think the appointment was like an hour and a half long. Um, so that was comforting to feel like it wasn't just a surgery to him and his team, but like he cared about us as a family and he cared about Samuel too. As a parent, I can appreciate that um, you know your child is the most important thing to you and, and his or her health um, is, is at the top of your priority list. I think the, the biggest thing for the parent is to kind of arm them with the, the appropriate information, give them as much you know, knowledge about the condition, and then hopefully you know, gain their trust that you know, this is something, although it's brand new for them, we deal with all the time you know, and, and we've successfully treated for years. I do approximately 25 to 30 surgeries for craniosynostosis each year. Ideally, when we you know, diagnose a baby at such a young age, I do the surgery at about 11 to 12 weeks old. Um, it kind of affords a, a good combination of the baby being old enough to, to tolerate anesthesia but still young enough that the bone is very thin and, and easy to work with. Basically what I'm doing in these endoscopic surgeries is taking out the bone that has closed early so that the brain can then grow in a normal manner and, and you know, allow the skull to expand the way it's supposed to. With Samuel, we didn't know what to look for and we were pointed out all the features and then once Barrett was born, um, it was pretty apparent to us at the beginning that he had it. I think within the first few hours of him being born, she was like, I think he has the same thing Samuel had. All the appointments leading up were the exact same, so familiarity always helps a little bit.
immediately after surgery, oh, yeah. we noticed that it was different because he had um, kind of like a bulge in the back and that was completely flattened out after surgery. And the forehead already started widening a little bit from being so narrow. To know that your kid has to have surgery is a really scary and fearful thing for parents. Um, but then to meet someone like Dr. Rinali and his team and I'm sure all the other surgeons at Wolfson, um, it's so comforting to talk to someone who is brilliant and so great at what he does and who truly cares about his families and his patients.